Proper training of fruit trees depends upon pruning out those branches that you don't want and making those branches that you leave grow in the direction that you want them to be in. To do this last part, to get it growing in the direction that you want, very often it's necessary to spread the branches. You want the branches to be down between a 45 and 60 degree angle. This makes your tree get bigger quicker, it makes it start flowering sooner, and it also will help spray penetration by getting the branches more open. We've talked before about branch spreaders, but I just wanted to show them again here. This type is a wooden with sharp nails on the end, or you can get a stiff metal rod, again sharpened. One end goes in the trunk, and the other end holds out the branch at the proper angle from the tree. There are other ways that you can use to spread branches. One would be to just hang some sort of weight on the branch, and just enough to bring it down to the angle that you want. This gets a little tricky in that you need to have exactly the right weight at exactly the right spot in order to get it to hang down. If, it, if you put on too much or if it slides down either direction on the branch, you don't get the proper angle. One variation of using a weight is to get a weight that you know is much heavier than the branch can support, such as these three bricks wired together or a cinder block, and just leave them on the ground and then run a piece of twine or some other string from here up to the branch so that you can tie it down in this way. You don't have to worry about the weight. You just need it strong. You need it to be heavier than the branch can pick up, and then you can determine the angle by the length of the string that you leave there. One other type of branch spreader that you that is available is the W clip. Now these are anchors. They come with their own special tool to insert them. What they are, you tie a piece of twine around the, around the clip, then using this tool you insert it into the ground and then when you retract the tool the clip stays down below and these wings will pull against the soil and hold your string down into the ground and then you can tie the other end to your branch. We have one that I've put in here already and as you see you, just, you can just tie the branch down in this manner. In some windy locations you may want to be careful about the use of these. If you get a lot of branch movement you might get this W clip pulling up out of the ground. There are ways to alleviate a lot of that, or some of that, by using two clips at an angle with each other to give double the, double the resistance and more holding power. Either way, you're going to have to watch out for, for the wind and check them to make sure they haven't pulled out. Now this tree, believe it or not, was just a little whip last year. It was cut off right at this point and at that point in time it was no bigger around than this branch right here. It has done a tremendous amount of growing in this one growing season and it has actually done too much for what we need to do. Usually you can leave the scaffold branches until the following year before you spread them. However, we've had such vigorous growth on this tree that this scaffold and this one over here have grown to such proportions that we're not going to be able to spread them easily. We have too narrow a crotch angle and can't get them spread. Our next best step, this is common in trees that have been left for a couple of years before you get into train them. Our next best step is to prune out to a side the side branch that's facing outward and then this branch can be spread. This still leaves this bad crotch angle but it does give you a 
a more limber side branch that you can spread out. Even though it's not an ideal situation, it is better, better than not doing anything. This other large branch at first looks like we can do exactly the same thing. Do you look in here, we have a very narrow crotch. And as we pull out on this branch, you'll see that it is splitting. So we cannot use this side branch. What we will have to do is go to this middle branch, which is much more vigorous, or much more sturdy, and we'll spread this. These other branches are going to be removed. They're, these two that I'm taking off now are growing on the inside of the branch, facing towards the center, and so they're not in a good position at all. So those will be removed, trying to leave a bit of a branch collar, then this branch will be spread out, and this will be spread out. Now this branch has a very good crotch angle. Unfortunately, it's in the wrong spot. You want to have at least four inches of space between your scaffolds if possible. So even though this is a good branch, we're going to have to remove it. And we'll go to this next branch and spread this out. So we will have three branches. spread out at the proper angle. Now when tying the string, what I'm going to do is put a small overhand loop and then tie that around. This way you don't girdle the branch with, with the string. You don't completely encircle the branch, but you can still hold it out. Very quickly, we're training this to a central leader. We've got three of our bottom scaffolds. This will be our central leader. This branch is competing with that one down there, so we'll get rid of These, ex these extra branches. We're going to save this one and spread it out to give us four scaffolds and one central leader. And now let's look at a tree, a peach tree that's trained to a different method. It's the open center system. This peach tree is also just one season old. It's grown very vigorously also. It's put on quite a bit of growth. If you'll remember, this is cut off at this height, and everything else has been growing out. We left the center to grow in order to force these lower branches to grow out and then up to improve the crotch angles. And as you can see, from this one on the side and from this one coming towards you, that has worked wonderfully. We have excellent branch angles here. Should make a good, strong crotch angle. And these have grown up and grown out. We're going to select this branch, this branch as a main scaffold, and this one on top. That will give us three scaffolds, and that's all we need. These lower branches are not needed, and we'll get rid of them. We also want to get rid of our center part because we want an open center training system. And now as you see, what's left are three very nicely spaced scaffolds. This back scaffold has a little bit more tendency to be growing up and into the middle. Just make one quick cut on it to an outward growing branch just to accentuate the tendency to keep it growing out. All three of these, as they get a fruit crop on them and get some weight, they will bend out 
and we'll have an excellent, excellent structured tree here. So remember, don't neglect the training on your young fruit trees. A little bit of care now can make your job in pruning and tending the tree much easier later on down the road.